We are at the end of September and that means that it is going to be potato harvest time. Potatoes are my absolute favorite crop to grow and they're actually in general just my favorite crop to harvest because it is like digging up gold. And we're gonna go over a little bit today about how we prepped this row and how they grew throughout the season and we're gonna also show you guys how many potatoes we get. This is our row that we dedicated for potatoes. We are a little bit shy of 30 feet. We ended up planting some bee balm at the end but the rest is all potatoes and I think we planted over 30 seed potatoes. It has been a while since we planted them. That was back in May and we planted I believe over 10 varieties so we're gonna see once we dig them up which ones they are and I'll try and remember the name. So just a quick rundown if you didn't catch when we planted our potatoes back in the spring we started this bed with soil. There's compost, barley, straw, we have alfalfa hay and we also have quite a bit of manure in there. And at the time of planting the potatoes, I added bone meal, which is something we always add for potato crops. From there, the maintenance of potatoes is pretty easy. Once the sprout sends up these little shoots, you, they will start to turn into leaves. And what you do is hill up the potatoes as they're growing to get more potatoes. We like to do that with dirt and a combination of straw. The straw makes it really loose and fluffy and very easy for harvesting time. As you can tell, our potato plants are definitely at the stage where they're ready to be pulled. We just had our first freeze and the first hard frost. So we got a hard frost just a few days ago, and that means it is time to pull up our potatoes here in Alaska. Back in Oregon, we used to pull up our potatoes a little bit earlier, but that was also because we planted them earlier and it was a different climate. So these potato vines have died back, as you can see, and the frost, of course, finished them off. They have been like this for a few weeks, and we now know that they're ready to be pulled up. So the first thing Eric and I need to do is go ahead and remove this straw. There's some mushrooms right there. We weren't able to weed this bed as they were growing. These potatoes actually did quite wonderful in the soil. They got huge. I'll scrounge back and see if I have a picture. They got just massive. They totally took up both rows and we're really excited to get these dug up and see what our yield is this year. The fingerling? The fingerling? Okay, so we found a little friend in the garden. This is our first slug of the year that we've seen in the garden. I found two kind of out and about, but I just don't think where we live we have a lot of these guys. And I'm probably just gonna put him back honestly since he doesn't have any friends. So we are going to actually start on the other end of this row where we have our fingerlings and some of our earlier maturing potatoes. When we took these ones off, they're already showing themselves, and that was just underneath the straw. These two potatoes right here are fingerling varieties, and I will look it up and try and list it. I believe I know which kind they are. And next to them, we have mountain rose. We have about 10 plants of those that we bought from Territorial. So generally, when you start potatoes, you start with one seed potato, and you will get about 10 times the amount, sometimes even more. We've gotten a lot more in the past from our fingerling potatoes. So as my friend Joe Dirt would say, life's a garden, dig it. Let's get digging this potato up. In fact, I think these are actually the fingerlings coming from this plant. You can tell by this little uh, root right here. So usually once the plant dies back, they will actually break free from that root. I am finding some of these are still a little bit attached, which is okay. I can tell their skin's not rubbing off. So they did mature the way we wanted them to in the ground. And Eric and I have this wheelbarrow that we are going to be putting all of our potatoes in. So I'm now making my way to Mountain Rose, which was just a little bit deeper. How far these go really just depends on the plant size and how much you hilled them. Ours are not that deep. We've had to dig them up further in the past. I did find the seed potato, which is all gross and mushy now. Very typical. Usually you won't even find this at all. Eric and I are going to get this variety done and we're going to show you guys along the way some of the other varieties and how much we get. I do imagine we'll get the most from this one which is Mountain Rose because we planted the most of these potatoes. These are the two fingerling potatoes. They're a later maturing potato and since we didn't plant them until a little bit late 
we ended up with them not being completely all the way done. As you can tell, they're still attached. The roots are still attached to the tubers themselves. And that is the seed potato itself. This is a fingerling potato, which usually they're smaller. We've gotten some big ones, but not this big from a fingerling potato. This is a worm. We've been finding these in the garden. There's, I believe this is like the only native worm to Alaska. It's a little tiny guy and we don't find that many of them up here, but I'm gonna get him back in there so we can make some more friends. Okay, so two varieties down. The fingerlings are on this side. We got a ton of fingerlings. This whole section right here was just from two plants. We got the mountain rose. The mountain rose did awesome. We got some huge ones in there. And the mountain rose is a red on the outside and kind of a pink on the inside. It's a really good potato. And next we are getting into kind of a classic red potato on the outside that has a white flesh. So let's get digging this nest variety up. But a different, oh no, that's the same one. So look at how big they are. This plant did a little better. Well, I'd say those ones did good. They just gave you like yeah, galactic they, sized potatoes. Ginormous, like a galaxy. Okay, on to the next variety. We hit the purples. Purples always do really good for us, so we'll see how many we got from them this year. On to the next variety. This is, I believe this is purple viking. This is purple on the outside with a white inside. Can I hand you some? Thank you. Sorry. Don't burn the potato. We are on to the gold varieties now. They look really nice so far. Yeah, there's taters here still. I think so. Okay, we're getting there. I think we're about probably three quarters of the way done. Our wheelbarrow is pretty much full. That thing's gonna be heavy to get out of here. So far, it's gone pretty good. I think we're we're doing just about as good as we always do with potatoes. There are some changes we're gonna make next year. Some don't really produce as good as others, but we do like to have a big variety of potatoes. That's why we grow so many different kinds. I'm not sure what variety this is exactly, but we've been pulling up a bunch of these and these things are huge. This isn't a russet, or I know that, but great yield this year. I mean, some of these potatoes are just like ginormous. Even our fingerlings, they feel like they're regular potatoes. So must be the Alaska sun. <laughs> I'm not sure what this is, but if I can show you, it's, it's almost the same size as my head, which is really creepy. Yeah, that is the biggest <laughs> potato. Not that we've ever grown, that I've ever seen. That's the biggest that I've ever seen. I mean, we've seen sweet potatoes this big, but this is a big white potato. That thing is huge. <laughs> We're gonna have to weigh that. This variety just went super throttle. Looks like we have a teeny tiny bit of, I, I think that's scab right there. We've actually noticed that these potatoes don't really have any sort of blemishes and no blight or anything like that, but that does look like scab. All our potatoes got huge, look at this. The varieties. What about the fingerlings? These aren't supposed to get that big. No, the fingerlings aren't, I don't think. I think it's why they're called fingerlings. They're the size of a finger. Fling. Well, we're getting there. Um, we're getting some crazy big potatoes. Probably have about six or seven plants left. We're just going to keep piling them on top of this wheelbarrow and we're going to see how many we're going to get. We're already extremely happy. We're going to be eating really good this winter. Wow. 
Check it. Oh, oh, stop yeah. sounding like a rapper. All right, that's it. We are all done digging up the potatoes and I'd say we did pretty good. I don't have an exact poundage. We're not gonna weigh all of these out, but I'm pretty happy with it. In general, we got a lot of really big potatoes, which is not bad, but kind of ridiculous because this is more than one to two meals. So I personally prefer to get potatoes that are more like a medium sized potato but I'm not gonna complain, they're just a little bit big. We only had two casualties. One casualty accidentally, I stabbed this one, and this one had a little soft spot, but besides that, the rest of the potatoes looked really good. We just had one variety show, a little bit of scab, and Eric and I are going to have to weigh the big ones inside. This is Harry, Larry, and Bob. These are our three biggest potatoes. So you may have been watching Eric and I get pretty messy when we were harvesting our potatoes. We just prefer to do it by hand. I know that's not really traditional. A lot of people will use a fork or some sort of equipment, which is totally all right. We just like to do it with our hands. That way we never really, you know, hurt a potato. And also, again, it is my favorite thing to do. It just feels like you're really getting to get down in there and grab the potato yourself with your hands. So <laughs> that is why I like to do it that way. Obviously you get very messy and you can wear gloves if you prefer. Let's talk a little about the row. So we will not be planting any more potatoes in that row next year. We're gonna be giving this row a break. That's called crop rotation. We wanna do that for about three to four years just because potatoes are susceptible to certain viruses and diseases. The one thing we have going for us on our side is that these potatoes store for a very long time, easily six months or longer. So that should be great for the winter, but we have to do what's called the curing process. And the curing process is where potatoes are subjected to a high humidity, about 90%, and a medium temperature. And what I mean by that is higher than a refrigerator temperature, but lower than room temp. So we're going to be putting them down in our root cellar as is. What I may do is just go along and brush some of that dirt off. I don't personally want to wash them and clean them. You can do that. I think they just store better with a little bit of dirt on them. And they already have a really hard skin. So what will happen after two weeks is they will be ready to be stored long-term and they will just sit down in the root cellar as it gets a little colder. And most important, they will be stored away from sunlight because sunlight will trigger the potatoes to send out shoots. And we don't want that. If you do want that to happen, you know, you can start to do that closer to when you're gonna be planting them in the spring, but we don't want that right now for when they're in storage. Before we get our potatoes weighed, I wanted to give you guys a sneak preview of a harvest video that we are going to be doing very shortly. This is our carrot row and it is almost ready to be harvested. I'm gonna get this one pulled up and we are expecting some pretty big things from this row. So everything's looking great so far. Okay, so Eric and I have got all of our potatoes put away in the root cellar and we are going to weigh in the three potatoes that we felt were the biggest. And the first one, I am pretty sure that this is a cow white variety of potato and I don't think they're supposed to get this big. I don't really know what happened, but let's go ahead and see how much it weighs. So a little under two and a half pounds. Seems a little, seems a little big for a potato. And it, I mean, that's, that's a lot of, that doesn't weigh that much to me for how big it is, but I still think that's a pretty big sized potato. And our Norland, I believe these are Norland, these are a red potato with a white flesh. They got very big too, and we have two that were pretty big, but I'm not sure which one weighs more. So let's go ahead and check. This is the first one. 2.19, pretty good. We have another one over here. This one may weigh a little more. 2.43, so huge potatoes. <laughs> So this is what a two pound or two plus pound potato looks like. All in all, we're very happy with how the potatoes did and we are going to get these three put away with the rest down in the root cellar and we will see you guys next time. This is Mountain Rose and let's go ahead and get it dug up. Can you say, as my friend Joe Dirt would say, life's a garden, let's dig it. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So as my friend Joe Dirt would say, life's a garden, let's dig it up. What did he say? <laughs> what? He says, life's a garden, dig it. So let's get... Okay. So as my friend Joe Dirt would say, life's a garden, 
Let's dig it. Light a cigar and dig it. And then start pulling them up. No, I wanted to show the close-ups. Okay, I'll just start pulling it up. So as my friend Joe Gar- <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So as my friend Joe Dirt would say, life's a garden, dig it. Dig it? <laughs> dig it. Let's dig it? No, life's a garden, dig it. Okay, I'm ready. And then start digging. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>